This is Newsroom on SABC News. Hello and welcome from Johannesburg here in South Africa. My name, of course, is Evan Jensen. The show is broadcast live every weekday morning, 2, 9 and 10 a.m. Highlights are then repeated 2 o'clock in the afternoon with a rebroadcast at 5 a.m. the following morning. We also stream live on YouTube between 9 and 10 a.m. every day. And you can watch the whole show on our YouTube channel all of the time today. Karinal took murder accused Oscar Pistorius right to the limit once again yesterday as the Paralympian broke down in court several times on the stand. We take a look at obesity here in South Africa and it's Easter time, so we'll check on road safety preparation for the coming Easter long weekend. But first, here are the news headlines. Murder accused Oscar Pistorius returns in the witness box in the North Gauteng High Court in Pretoria for the seventh day. State prosecutor Gerry Null is most likely to continue with his cross-examination of the athlete for at least another day or two. The state has highlighted several more contradictions in the athlete's testimony. Null says Pistorius' version of events that led to him killing his girlfriend, Riva Stenkamp, is getting more and more improbable. His list of questions today are likely to continue focusing on the toilet cubicle and the subsequent shooting of Stinkham. Government says it will not tolerate any violence or disruptions during the national elections on the 7th of next month. It says it's confident that the IEC will deliver credible and fair elections despite the internal problems that the Elections Commission is facing. The Justice and Security Cluster Ministers briefed the media in Victoria yesterday declaring that government was ready for the election. Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan has blamed the group Boko Haram for bombing at a bus station near the capital Abuja, killing more than 70 people. At least 120 people were wounded in the explosion that happened yesterday. It was the deadliest attack yet in Abuja, the centrally located capital that is hundreds of kilometers from Boko Haram's stronghold in Nigeria's northeast. The explosion also destroyed 16 luxury buses and 24 minibuses and cars. Murder accused Oscar Pistorius will face another tough day as he returns in the witness box in the High Court in Pretoria. State prosecutor Gerry Null is most likely to once again focus on the toilet cubicle and the subsequent shooting of his girlfriend, Riva Stenkamp, when he cross-examines Pistorius this morning. Now says Pistorius' version of events that led to him killing Stenkamp is getting more and more improbable. Now, as always, joining us from the North Gauteng High Court uh, in Pretoria is uh, Chrysalda Lewis. Good morning, Chrysalda. Very good morning to you, Evan. I cannot remember what I'd forgotten, my lady. That sort of sums up yesterday in court, Chrysalda. Well, well, certainly, Yevon, we're expecting a cross-examination of uh, Paralympian Oscar Pistorius to continue here at the uh, North Gauteng High Court. Well, the focus, as you said, will continue to be on the toilet cubicle as Oscar Pistorius now seems there are several inconsistencies in the story that he's giving relating uh, to the events that led to him shooting and killing Riva Stienkamp on Valentine's Day. The state maintains that Oscar Pistorius knew that he was shooting at Riva Stienkamp when he opened fire and that when he shouted in his home that morning, he shouted, get out of my home. He was actually referring to Riva Stienkamp and telling it to leave the state, basing its case, saying that there was a fight that took place at Oscar Pistorius's home and that Oscar Pistorius needs to admit to that. Oscar Pistorius breaking down several times. The state now accusing Oscar Pistorius of also uh, changing the foundation of his defence, saying that he's changed it uh, from self-defence to an involuntary action. Oscar Pistorius, of course, maintaining that that is not the case. And several inconsistencies really that have been eyebrow-raising in this case. And um, uh, law experts are saying that Oscar Pistorius will have a very difficult time time recovering from those inconsistencies. I see a little bit more action there behind you, Chrysal. It looks like there's a little bit more commotion uh, going on there this morning. He's asking the court and what's happening there behind you? 
given this really highlights the, uh, the, the media's interest at this stage, the group that you're seeing here uh, towards my right are uh, supporters of another case that is taking place inside this court relating to uh, the murder of a Clarkstorp woman. And uh, really, the media really are not focusing on that at all. Uh, obviously, here for Oscar Pistorius, I think it really does uh, shed some uh, uh, spotlight on the media and how the media or what they believe is interesting. This case totally being ignored this morning. There are a few supporters of Oscar Pistorius as well this morning. The same group that were here yesterday, they're also uh, carrying placards and uh, basically show, continuing to show support for Oscar Pistorius. Yeah, there's a, there's a blog uh, also up in support of Oscar. All very interesting stuff if you have time for that sort of thing. Let's just focus again back in the courtroom today. Of course, a tough day yesterday. But uh, Oscar being accused of lying and faking tears and, and all sorts of stuff by Gerinel. More of the same today, I would think. If you could kindly repeat that, Eben. I said Oscar was accused yesterday of faking tears and, and blatantly lying in court. Uh, Gerinel would pretty much take the same line today, one would think. Well, most certainly, uh, Yevon. Well, previously we saw Gerinel, every time that Oscar Pastorius broke down, we would adjourn and give him time uh, to compose himself. But it really seems like Gerinel uh, uh, could not be bothered at this stage. Whether Oscar Pastorius breaks down, he accused uh, the Paralympian of uh, using uh, his cheers to evade um, uh, difficult questions. And we saw basically Gerinel digging in yesterday, getting him to answer those questions about uh, why, number one, he did not fire warning shots, uh, why he did not uh, look uh, for Riva Steenkamp on the floor, uh, several other places where Oscar Pastorius looked. He also asked Oscar Pastorius why he did not uh, uh, look towards the, uh, the bedroom uh, door, why he didn't check if Riva Steenkamp had left through the bathroom door in order to go for safety if they, he thought that um, uh, there was an intruder in his home. So we're expecting more tough questions um, uh, for Oscar Pastorius uh, inside court today. Griselda, the, the uh, Steenkamp family uh, after yesterday, it was quite a, an emotional day in court. Uh, has there been any further reaction from them? You know, they've called him the devil uh, last week. Anything else coming out of the Steenkamp sort of camp at the moment? We've really been focusing a lot, Urban, on uh, the reaction of uh, 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 June Stiankamp, Riva Stiankamp's mother, and it's always been the same. Uh, she's very stony-faced. She really doesn't show any emotion. She doesn't use this entrance to go inside the court, and when she leaves, she goes out using another entrance as well and really isn't saying much, apart to uh, the interviews that she's doing with the international media, in particularly media in the UK. Uh, no reaction whatsoever, but from Riva Cousin, cousin, for example, um, Kim Martin, uh, she has really been uh, showing a bit of emotion where she keeps putting her head down when there are gruesome images that are emerging from inside court. And uh, you would know as well, uh, Mark Batchelor, who was also uh, uh, spoken about extensively in this case as well, where Oscar Pastorius is alleged to have threatened to break his legs, uh, really showing, uh, uh, shaking his head every time uh, Oscar Pastorius continues to give his version of events. Let's just focus this way a bit now, uh, Yerban, as uh, Oscar Pastorius arrives for another day of what's expected to be a grilling inside this court. The media are on standby to get that shot. Oscar Pastorius about uh, to make his way inside court now. There he is acknowledging uh, one of his supporters shaking his head there. I'm not sure uh, if you saw that shaking his head yesterday as well. He acknowledged the supporters who were here, uh, who were carrying uh, some placards, uh, uh, carrying a trophy with his name and also uh, uh, CDs with Christian songs on it. That's their show of support for Oscar Pastorius. So uh, another day of grilling expected for Oscar Pastorius as the media also goes in now to take their seats, court uh, to get under away again at 9.30 this morning. Thank you very much, Chris Holder. If we cannot be more on top of this story, I tell you, Oscar Pastorius just getting to courtside there and going inside with all his minders, as you saw there, with, uh, well, with a, 
a luxury vehicle dropping off. Just to recap then, State Prosecutor Heron Null is most likely to continue with his cross-examination of uh, Oscar Pistorius for at least another day or two, they say. This will be the athlete's seventh day in the witness box in the North Gauteng High Court in Pretoria. Null says Pistorius' version of events that led to him killing his girlfriend, Reva Stenkamp, is getting more and more improbable. When the athlete arrived... But in the dock, Pistorius again cut a lone figure. Can you remember what you shouted? I screamed, I said, get the fuck out of my house. Get the fuck out of my house. But the state argues that this was directed at Stienkamp after a fight. Why would it be traumatic what you shouted at the, at the intruders? My lady, I'm, I'm traumatised by the events and it, by repeating those exact words, it reminds me about the night and what I felt on that evening. Pastorius had initially said he whispered to Stienkamp to call the police, but now says... He spoke in a low tone. I didn't whisper, my lady. If somebody would say that you whispered, that person would be lying. That's right, my lady. Do you know who that person is? It's because somebody said it. No, my lady. It's you. The state accused the athlete of tailoring his evidence. It grilled him on why he failed to identify the sounds of the window and the door slamming during his sworn statement. It's such an important, significant noise, and it's not in your bail. I mentioned it to my, to my legal team, my lady, and uh, I don't know why it's not in my bail, um, bail statement, my lady. Why would that not be there? I'm not sure, my lady. No, it's because you never said it, sir. It's because you invented it. Then he was asked what his intention was when he fired. I didn't fire to kill anyone, my lady. Your defence have now changed, sir. From putative self-defence to involuntary action. You see, Mr. Pistorius, you now, you now have to give a lot of answers. And you know why, Mr. Pistorius? It's because you, you know exactly. You fired at Riva. <laughs> I did not fire at Riva. To trump up its claim that the couple argued and why Stiankamp would be standing in front of the door. Why would she stand there, Mr. Pistorius, if she was scared? I don't know, my lady. Because she was talking to you, sir. That's not true, my lady. All the screams and shouts you scre screamed at her. And she fled for her life. And when the athlete became emotional... Why are you getting emotional now? Is it about what happened or is it about the questions and your frustration in answering them? Because now we dealt with nothing but your version. Why are you getting emotional? It's an emotional... It's emotional no. memories for me. No, it's not. It, you're getting frustrated because your version is improbable and you, you're getting emotional. In a second week of cross-examination, Pastorius is seemingly buckling under pressure. There's been a number of contradictions in his testimony, and the state contends that his version is pure fabrication. And it's not over yet as cross-examination continues. Chris Alder Lewis, SABC News, at the North Gauteng High Court. Now, it's a statistic to die for. South Africa is amongst the top three countries in the world in obesity rankings after the United States of America and Great Britain. 2.8 million people in South Africa die annually as a result of being overweight or obese, says the Self-Medication Association of South Africa, SMASA, and said the time has come for South Africans to take stock. The United States of America recently made a bold move to declare war on obesity by classifying it as a disease. Locally, data from the Medical Research Council, the MRC, has found that two-thirds of women and one-third of men are considered overweight or obese in South Africa, resulting in a steady rise in non-communicable diseases that add to the already overburdened health care system. According to Dr. Dominic Stott, Executive Medical Standards and Services at PPS, the, de the development by the American Medical Association, the AMA, could mean a complete mind shift in the way obesity is treated here in South Africa. Currently, the disease implies that there is a malfunction in the body part or body function. Dr. Stott joins us in the studio to talk about this. Normally, 
unreported disease in a way. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Thank you for, for joining us. Thank you. Very much an unreported disease, but I wanted to ask you, in this case specifically, the difference between declaring uh, obesity as a disease and not just as a, as a complication, and, and how do you see that? When it was declared a disease last year by the AMA, that was a milestone, actually, because this means now that more funding can be put towards not only the care of people who currently are obese or overweight yep. um, in terms of surgery and medication and counselling, weight loss programmes and so forth, but it also highlights the need that this is to be prevented as well as cured. Um, you know, the, the United States, as you quite rightly said, have a huge problem. Yeah. Um, they have 12 million children who are also considered overweight or obese. Yeah. So this is the coming generation who need the education and the input from this generation to teach them how not to get to the point where they actually need a cure. Yeah, in South Africa, what do the statistics reveal about uh, obesity in our country? I saw two-thirds of women and a third of men are all obese in South Africa. Is that accurate? It's overweight, not obese. Um, overweight is measured with something called the body mass index. Yeah. Um, there's been controversy about that too. But um, I think the significance for us is that it's a burgeoning problem and yeah. it's only getting worse. And the problem with this is that there are long-term effects. It's not just um, health for now. It's health for the future. Mm. So these people who are currently 35 years and older in that statistical analysis, um, you're looking at the next 40 years of their lives, which is where we look at from a life insurance perspective. Yeah. And those people are going to face the significant health issues of diabetes, arthritis, heart disease and strokes, which come with the other problems of uh, obesity, such as hypertension. What about obesity and uh, extreme poverty in the South African scenario? How does that play out? The poverty means that people are not being taught what the correct eating plan should be, and they don't have available the kind of food that they need to keep themselves within a normal weight. Fruit and vegetables are considerably more expensive and more difficult to get hold of mm. than convenience foods. Yeah. So for children, it's unfortunate that children will always default, especially in a poorer society, they will default to the easiest thing they can yeah. find. Do we, do we, do we see, foresee a future in South Africa where, much like smoking, advertising campaigns for sugary foods and fatty foods and so forth, that we're clamped down on that? Do we see that in the future? I definitely feel that is the way to go. Because it's only by the public lobbying of, for example, the anti-smoking campaigns, the lead in paint, for example, yeah. car seats, crash helmets for motorcyclists, that these kind of health issues were forcibly addressed and passed into law. And, and do you see us following suit, follow the American model and, and declaring it a d uh, disease in the near future? I think it's possible. I would hope so. But even if it isn't, it needs to be addressed more forcibly by the powers that be to ensure that we don't have the kind of statistics that they have in the States. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. That's uh, Dr. Dominique Stott uh, talking about obesity here in South Africa. And we are the third highest ranked country in the world. That is not a positive. Let's take a quick look at what you are talking about this morning on uh, social media. Lots, of course, uh, happening. Everyone wants to talk about Oscar, I suppose. Kate Prank says, it's not a case that Oscar Pistorius didn't trust the South African police service. It's a case that he thinks he is and was above the law. Good luck to the estate agent that will try and sell Oscar Pistorius' house, says Alvaro. Yep, keep your mind on the money, he says. Law says, the facts are this. He picked up a gun, he fired that gun, shot, hit Reva, and Reva died. She's dead because of him. That's called responsibility, I think. Janet Gardner says, Thank goodness Oscar isn't being tried in Florida. A Florida jury would let him off. 
And Mark says the police messed up everything for this case. Oscar Tras, so unprofessional, stealing watches, moving things. That is an allegation, Mark. Those are some of your thoughts uh, on our Twitter feed. Of course, let's have a look at what's happening on Facebook here. As always, we share with you all the latest on the Oscar Pistorius trial, articles, photos, tweets. There you'll also find the latest statistics from Data Driven Insights Africa on the Pistorius trial. And that makes interesting reading. Yesterday, we spoke to DDR's Tonya Kuring. The interview is also available on the page. Then, just on a historical note, one of the biggest shipwrecks in history. The sinking of the Titanic happened today, exactly 102 years ago. On the page, you'll find rare footage of the Titanic we found on YouTube. Then, on the 15th of April, 1996, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the TRC, here in South Africa, under the chairmanship of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, began its first formal hearings in East London City Hall. The South African TRC was set up by the government to, of National Union to help deal with violations of human rights during the apartheid era. The Commission heard testimonies from all members of South African society about political crimes, violence and human rights abuses that had not been disclosed. Mandela asked Archbishop Tutu to chair the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Its mandate was to document the horrors of apartheid and to sow the seeds of reconciliation between blacks and whites. We do want to forgive, but I mean, we don't know how to, for, who to forgive yeah. because we don't know the killers, you know? He had a gun in his hand to point it at my forehead. The act of opening the magazine was the detonating device for a bomb. And then they said to me, today you are going to die. During that period, well, you were nothing. suffocated. Mercedes-Benz is all what you can expect from a lifestyle brand itself. So, we are about premium and luxury, we are about fascination, perfection, at the same time responsibility to our communities. You know, my father was a musician and he loved music, he loved especially choral music. Now as a person of colour, you can't hit on her like, hello nice. Man, they were a great audience. No, they were the, they, I had so much fun performing for them. Baby, I love. That's Kaleidoscope, Sundays, 5.30pm on SABC News. back. This is Newsroom on SABC News. As the Easter weekend approaches, families all around South Africa are planning holiday trips to better uh, destinations and holiday destinations here around the country. The concern for authorities across the country is always that road safety uh, over the long weekend. South Africa has some of the worst Easter weekend road accident statistics in the world every year. Road safety campaigns are in full swing across the country to ensure that South Africans travel safely. Well, down in the Eastern Cape. There's a keen focus, as many people will be going to that side of the world. Now, Yuri Blichnot joins us from Port Elizabeth. Good morning, Yuri. Thanks for joining us. Hi, good morning, Evan, and good morning to the viewers. Yuri, I know the president is in the, is in the province, and we want to talk about that, but just tell us quickly about the kind of campaigns that's been put in place as the influx of people from up country are coming down to the Eastern Cape. Yes, today is the, the official launch for the Easter safety campaign on our roads here in the province by the Department of Roads and Transport. But even more significant, it's the official opening of a traffic centre in the small town of Aberdeen in the Karoo. Now, Aberdeen is sort of the point where two very significant roads join on the road to Graaf Renet and then from there on to Port Elizabeth and up into the northeastern parts of the province and the former homelands of Transkai and Siskai. Now, this traffic centre will give a permanent presence 
in that area where there never used to be one. 20 officers will be stationed there, and the idea behind the traffic center is to have permanent visibility on the notorious R61 coming from Beaufort West to Aberdeen and the notorious N9 coming from Willowmore to Aberdeen through to Graaf Renet. Now, these two roads combined... Um, in the year 2010-2011, more than uh, 40 people died on these two roads in vehicle accidents. And with an increased uh, visibility on the roads, um, the traffic department will try and decrease these amount of accidents and the fatalities. Um, as a lot of these accidents involved uh, long-distance minibus taxis as people travel from uh, the Western Cape through to the Eastern Cape for the holiday seasons. Just tell us about uh, the rural areas. It's very rural out on that side of the world and stray animals and that sort of thing also pose a real risk. Is this going to uh, help curb that, uh, that threat as well? Yes, with the increased visibility, the traffic officers in that region, because there were 20 officers uh, stationed at Aberdeen uh, on a rotational basis, they'll be on the roads more often. There will also be increased uh, traffic officer vehicles. Today, 62 vehicles, ambulances and uh, traffic safety vehicles will also be uh, distributed by the department. And with the increased visibility, the officers will be able to spot problem areas, as you said, like stray animals on the road, or they might spot uh, traffic infringements. Um, a big problem there is because of the distances, if you take from Beaufort West through to Aberdeen or from Willowmore to Aberdeen, uh, fatigue becomes a problem because of the open expanse. The road's very quiet, um, and that leads to a lot of one-vehicle accidents, even where vehicles leave the road and, and turn over, which leads to a lot of deaths. Now, what traffic officers can also do is have, you know, random stops, uh, stop vehicles, get drivers to rest a little bit, just to break the, the monotony of driving on the long roads. And through all this visibility, they are hoping that they will see less accidents on that road and obviously then less deaths. Yuri, I wanted to ask you finally about the president being in the province. Can you just tell us what, uh, what's on the itinerary? Yes, today President Zuma is on a monitoring visit here in Nelson Mandela Bay. Now, a monitoring visit, uh, he will look at issues like service delivery. He will look at issues of governance. Um, and he'll be in various discussion forums throughout the day. And with him, he's brought along nine ministers and one deputy minister to take part in these discussions to see if they can take governance forward here. But he actually started early this morning with a visit to the Mflobo Wenene studios here, where he had a nice chat on air about the the history of radio, the role radio plays in the past 20 years of democracy, but also where radio came from through the struggle with uh, radio freedom and the part that played. And the president was quite keen to talk about that and, and reminisce a little bit and then obviously put forward that in the last 20 years, radio has have maintained its critical role in disseminating information yeah. and, and reaching the masses as uh, the, the most widely accepted and, and, and used uh, medium. Thank you very um, much. From there onwards... Oh. Uh, just quickly, he's also going to have a, a, a meeting later on with uh, city officials and uh, business leaders okay. to deal with certain issues which was put on the table two weeks ago. A delegation from the Nelson Mandela Business Chamber went up to the president in Pretoria where they have put certain things for them which they would like to see discussed, like infrastructure and also the political strife within the municipality they want to see resolved to take the economy forward. And then this afternoon, the president will finish it off with a public meeting in New Brighton with the people of Port Elizabeth, where they will discuss certain issues uh, like service delivery, for instance. Yuri Blithner, thank you very much for keeping us in the loop as to what's happening down in the Eastern Cape. Of course, lots of people traveling down there and the roads are quite dangerous. If you are going to travel, be patient saves lives on our roads. Deputy Minister of Transport Sindiswa Chikunga will today officially launch the uh, R2, uh, what, 295 million rand realigned N1 freeway through Fentersburg, about, about 150 kilometers outside of Bloemfontein. The freeway is the main road transport corridor connecting two main cities of Cape Town and Johannesburg via Bloemfontein. The road is expected to yield economic spin-offs both for the people of nearby Mamabane Township and the businesses there in Fentersburg. The launching of the road coincides with the Easter long weekend where high traffic volume is expected to pass through the area. The freeway was a two-lane single carriage that could no longer cope with the high levels of traffic and has now been upgraded to a four-lane carriage in Fentersburg. Richard Newton has more on this story. A very good morning to you, Richard. Are you there? Hi, Eben. Good morning. Just give us a quick update on the new section. I see it looks very impressive there behind you. 
Yes, yeah, but while you're joining us here at Fentersburg, um, I can barely hear you because of the party atmosphere that's going on here. Massive marquees, a lot of people from the town coming in, and it's exactly this road that you can see behind me that people are celebrating. Now, for those who use this road and who have traveled through Fentersburg on this N1, an important uh, road in our country, of course, will know that it was always just a double lane road through the town. We're talking traffic volumes of over 6,000 vehicles a day. Over 1,000 of those are trucks. And of course, the road split the town down the middle. And it meant that uh, any pedestrians getting from one side to the other, getting to school or to businesses or back home, had to cross that um, in one road. And of course, now this multi, multi million rand network has not only brought uh, double uh, sides on both, or, but both directions, but also two pedestrian bridges that have um, made it so much easier and so much safer. That's the big thing for people to get across to the other side of town. So massive celebrations here. And as you were saying, we've got three long weekends coming up in as many weeks. Uh, and that's going to increase the volume on these roads tremendously. And today, not only celebrating the opening of this road, but also looking at how the province can address the issues that are going to come up with all the people traveling through this province over the Easter weekends. And, and Richard, uh, for the town and the area, it must be a huge economic boost and, and quite uplifting for the people. Well, of course, yes. I mean, Fentersburg uh, being in this very important part of the road, uh, the, the, the small dual uh, double lane road that used to go through here made it very difficult for people to turn off. There was one filling station that people might have stopped off or thought, well, let's go through to Kronstadt. Now, of course, because you have this beautiful road with two areas you can actually go off the road and go up to filling stations and restaurants and so on, we've already seen this morning people, people putting up stalls um, alongside the road, uh, looking ahead to the weekend. So, it's going to be a massive injection for this for this small community and uh, uh, big up to them for, for putting up with it this long and now looking at the prospects of more uh, passengers pulling off, putting in petrol, getting a bite to eat and buying some knickknacks from the locals. Now, now Richard, uh, I understand there's some people who, who say that they stand to lose some business. What are they saying and uh, what are they unhappy with? Well, you know, we're looking at the wider issues in the province, and uh, while we're celebrating this particular road, which is making it better for this community, uh, the community of Harry Smith um, is up in arms because they've been told that the N3, which of course goes from Gauteng through parts of our province down to KwaZulu Natal, may be diverted around Harry Smith and may take the road 13 kilometers away from that town. Now, of course, uh, anyone who's been through Harry Smith will know that it's the restaurants, the petrol stations, the B&Bs, the stayover hotels that. Uh, make that town what it is and of course if it is correct that this road is to be diverted past Harry Smith and I'm told perhaps even Peter Maritzburg as well then of course people are certainly going to be up in arms and that's something we'll be tracking with the Deputy Minister here today. Richard thank you very much for uh, that contribution today that is uh, Specialist Correspondent Richard Newton coming to you live from Fencesburg about 150 kilometers outside of uh, Bloemfontein where uh, well a new road or the highway between Bloemfontein and Johannesburg really is now a double uh, carriageway. Good news there. Now, the court is just in session. There we go. Gerry Nall is back on the stand giving Oscar Pistorius another grilling today. Let's go straight to the North Harting High Court. What day of the week is the 5th of it's May? A Monday, it's a Monday. It's in the week that uh, it's, there will be elections in that week on the 7th. So... Um, It would be two weeks, two, two weeks, a postponement for two weeks. Indeed, my lady. Yes. It, it, it sounds like two weeks, but if, if one really goes through the diary mm. and one identifies the working days in the week, my lady, it's, it's no more than seven. I haven't counted this morning, but I remember having counted it. Uh, although it's a two-week postponement, my lady, mm. on core days that we, that we may miss, it's maximum seven days, mm. my lady. Yes. Thank that's, you. that's my application. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Rook? My lady, at the inception of the trial, we were informed about prior engagements with requiring yes. or necessitating preferential treatment, mm -hmm. and we then arranged our affairs accordingly mm -hmm. at the time, accepting, maybe incorrectly so, without your blessing, that that would be the situation. So uh, we have full understanding and support for the application. Uh, we a question that, that may be put to us 
about the expected or the anticipated duration of the defence mm. case, my lady. The, that was going to be my question. I, 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 I anticipated that, my lady. Uh, if I if I can put something, do something to stop Mr. Now in cross examination, not to be that long. Of course, would be a, that's a lighter note. It would be more accurate, but. Uh, just on an analysis of what we think we believe that the time would suffice between the 5th and the 16th. Okay. You're talking May? May, my lady. Should, should of course, you grant the application. Yes. Um, on what we worked out, we, we also, from our side, uh, we have witnesses ready on standby to use up for the rest of this week all the available court time. When you say 15, 16, you're talking of evidence being wrapped up? Yes, my, my lady, that's what, that's what we believe. Uh, I, I can't control the cross-examination. I can only anticipate how long it should take per witness. And on that analysis, we believe that will be the case. Of course, not argument stage, but we believe that that, that would necessitate its own postponement to do written aids yes. of argument yes. and so forth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, my lady. Thank you very much. Mr. Nell, anything else? As a good please, my lady. Anything else? No, no, I've nothing, nothing to add, my lady. Okay, thank you. I want to think about this. Tomorrow morning I'll be able to give you uh, my answer. As the court pleases. As the court pleases. Thank you. We're ready to proceed. Yes. Mr. Pistorius, you ready? I am, my lady. You still under oath? Thank you, my lady. Yes, Mr. Nell. As a good pleases, my lady. Mr. Pistorius, there are two things that I just want to go back to before we proceed from where we uh, ended yesterday. And that is, on your version, Mr. Pistorius, the deceased must have opened the, the bathroom window. That's correct, my lady. Now, on your version, would she have done that before or after she's been to the toilet? Before, my lady. Now, so she, uh, on your version, she opened it, the door before she went to the door. No, my lady. <laughs> After, let's say again, I'm, I'm bad for Mr. When did she open the window? She opened the window before she went to the toilet, my That's lady. That's it. And... And I'm not going to go step by step. Just in summary, you heard the noise, you armed yourself, you walked, and when you and in the passage you screamed. That's just a summary. That's correct, my lady. So, Mr. Pistorius, on your version, she must have had time to void her bladder. That's correct, my lady. And get dressed. I don't follow the question, my lady. She's dressed when you sh when when uh, you shot her. She was dressed when when she went to the bathroom, my lady. When she fell asleep, she was dressed. But then she voided her bladder and dressed herself. And she was wearing basketball shorts, my lady. So she should have had to have pulled them up. That's yes. correct. So on your version, and that is before she shut the door. Am I right? Uh, yes, that sounds correct, my yes. lady. So, she would have gone to the bathroom, opened the window, she would have gone into the, the cubicle, toilet cubicle, voided the bladder in the time before she shut the door. That's correct, my lady. Mr. Pistorius, on my understanding, they would not have, uh, they would not have been enough time for her to do that. I disagree, my lady. Okay, that's fine. Um, the, what, the one other aspect, uh, Mr. Pistorius is the noise within the toilet, and I'm not going to rehash it, there's one aspect that I want to deal with, and that is how you described it in the bail application. Can you still remember how you described it in the bail application? No, my lady. 
Very much. I just bend down to get something from my bag. In your bail application, you said, my lady, it's page 65 of the Exhibit D, the bail application, <coughs> line 9. Uh, it, it, it's unfortunately not in the in, in Exhibit D. It's somewhere. Uh, we'll get somebody to assist you. 